move around the country and around the world like we take for granted today, that's worth the hard work today to preserve that for tomorrow. I believe we're at our best when we're confronted with big issues. This is a big one and it won't wait. So let's get started now. Thank you. start with some of the limestone aggregate trails that we have. Um, we have approximately eight miles of the trails and they're constructed out of what's called 10F limestone material and the limestone trails work extremely well in a type of setting like this. This is um, along a creek and we work closely with the Army Corps of Engineers and the Indiana Department of Natural Resources with permitting in order to construct this trail. This is another section of aggregate trail along our mill race canal and originally we constructed this with asphalt and over time it became extremely rough due to the shifting of the ground, um, basically due to the muskrat burrows that were going through the bank of the canal and so we needed to um, figure out a way to replace the asphalt and put down the aggregate. Another section of aggregate trail, this just works extremely well and 
a more natural setting. And it's, ex it's extremely cheap to construct and it's also um, easy to maintain. So we like our, we like our limestone trails. Now moving on to the asphalt trails. The city of Goshen has approximately nine miles of asphalt trails. And these type of trails require quite a bit of maintenance. Um, typically we sweep them, try to sweep them once a year. And then we also, we're getting ready to resurface this section of trail on the, um, just past that stop sign. It's been down for approximately, I think almost 20 years. And it's going to cost about $20,000 to resurface about, I think it's around three quarters of a mile of that trail. This is a new section of trail that was recently constructed. It's actually along um, the pumpkin vine trail that connects us to the town of Middlebury and also it also connects to the town of Shipshawana. The city has made some accommodations with regards to the bike lanes on the existing roadway pavement. And um, we put this straight on a road diet, and then uh, which allowed for the accommodation of the bike lanes. We also have certain streets that have that are utilized for both vehicular and bicycle traffic. And these streets have pavement markings are called sharrows, and it just warns motorists that they need to share the road with our bicycles. Moving on to concrete trails, the city has approximately 10 miles of trails constructed out of concrete. And this, this particular trail is also a sidewalk too. This section of trail is a newly built trail through um, Goshen's oldest cemetery. And yes, I did say it was a cemetery and the Fort Wayne, in that Fort Wayne district calls it the spooky trail because <laughs> um, most people don't take a trail through the cemetery. Bicyclists and pedestrians walk the shortest distance from point A to point B. And this is um, so important because they're utilizing their own power and not relying on some type of motor to get them to their destination. So we built this, There's. I just wanna make sure that everybody understands that sometimes there's obstacles to overcome and it's definitely something that you can do. This boardwalk was built over wetlands and again we worked with the um, Army Corps and DNR to make sure that we could get this boardwalk built. One of our trails um, included trying to figure out how to get underneath the State Road 15 overpass and um, we had to figure out how to get through this um, abutment to the bridge. So we constructed a gravity wall to hold back the um, slope wall, or yeah, the slope wall of the bridge. And here's the um, new trail under the bridge. Then. I don't know why. This is um, basically the finished product project um, once they got done with all the work. Again, this is another project that was not an easy task. Um, but bicyclists and pedestrians had a hard time crossing State Road 119. And so we built a uh, pedestrian tunnel under State Road 119. And the reason it wasn't an easy feat is because on the right side, um, there's the Mill Race Canal, a water body. And then um, to the left in this picture, there's a um, the Elkhart River. So we had groundwater and all sorts of things to contend with um, while building this. But uh, it's a safe tunnel now for pedestrians and bicyclists to be able to uh, get across or under the State Road 119. This tunnel project was a safety improvement project to ensure bicycles and pedestrians passage across the Norfolk Southern Railroad Marion Branch on the Winona Trail. A lot of times we have slow or stop trains on um, through the Goshen College campus and it hinders trail users and the students from getting to class. So there have been several occasions where impatient pedestrians, they'll climb over or under stop trains to cross the tracks, which imposes an enormous safety concern. So on a very, very hot July 4th, crews from Northern Indiana, construction, Niblock excavating, and Norfolk Southern had 24 hours to construct the tunnel underneath the railroad tracks. And they made it in time and they did an awesome job.
job. The stairs, these are the stairs to the tunnel, and um, you can see on each side of the railing, there is a groove at the base of the railing, and this groove is called a runnel, and that's where the bicyclists put their bike trails for easier transport up and down the stairs, and the massive amount of railing to the right of the this, this stairwell wall is for the incline lift to, in order to comply with ADA regulations. And then here is a picture of the tunnel. I wish I would have had a uh, more recent picture because there's murals down there. Um, but I, Goshen College students and Glenn is here. He might be able to. What? I'll get you a picture. Okay. <laughs> I, I didn't include the picture of when the college students took their uh, furniture from the uh, residence halls and stuck it down there during exam week. <laughs> um, basically, a lot of times we have bridges that we need to cross the waterways, and this one was in need of repair. And it's it's an old bridge. The Murray family owned this bridge. And they worked on the 15-acre farm on the west side.